After J. Robert Oppenheimer witnessed the first atomic bomb test, he said, I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. While that was a slight misquotation of a Hindu poem, the words still reflect the gravity of the situation. Interestingly, for a short time during the Manhattan Project, physicist Edward Teller feared this is what they might accomplish. Specifically, Teller considered that they might create a runaway nuclear reaction between the nitrogen atoms in the sky. However, Hans Bethe quickly quelled his theory about the destruction of the atmosphere and, with others, helped convince the rest of physicists that it was theoretically unlikely. As a result, we know it is not possible to ignite the atmosphere of Earth. However, Titan, a moon of Saturn, now that is an interesting story. Four years ago, I had shoulder surgery. Prior to surgery, I told everyone I was finally going to take some time off after the 10-year process. For six weeks before starting physical therapy, I was going to sit on the couch, relax, and recover. Here's a picture of our cat, Sunny, helping me during the recovery process. However, after two weeks, I was bored and driving my wife crazy. I needed something to do. Around this time, I was watching the Nova special on PBS called Chasing Pluto. Apparently, Pluto's atmosphere contains more carbon monoxide than expected. Now, while carbon monoxide is hazardous to breathe, it actually has a heating value and can be considered a relatively weak fuel. In fact, the use of carbon monoxide as a fuel is a discussion that we have in my internal combustion engines class. Furthermore, our laboratory at Kansas has published papers using carbon monoxide along with hydrogen as a synthetic gaseous fuel. So I thought, can I burn the atmosphere of Pluto? Well, this outlandish question started me down the path of a rather unique and complex theoretical journey. Since I had nothing to do, I began to research Pluto to see if there was any oxygen available, the other requirement for burning the atmosphere. No luck. But this raised another question. Are there any other bodies in our solar system that contain both fuel and oxygen besides Earth? This is where Titan enters the picture. In simpler terms, the thick atmosphere of Titan is very similar in composition to the natural gas we use here on Earth. In addition, there's a subsurface liquid water ocean where we could recover the oxygen needed for combustion purposes. Okay, this is crazy, right? I mean, we couldn't, we couldn't burn the atmosphere of Titan, or could we? First, where would we get the energy needed in order to electrolyze this subsurface ocean, in order to recover the oxygen needed? Well, leave it to NASA to answer that question indirectly. Perhaps you remember the Huygens probe that descended to the surface of Titan. Here we see aerial views from this probe as it descends to its landing site. Well, this probe found definite zones of wind. Coupled with Titan's 85% reduced gravity and an atmospheric pressure one and a half times that of Earth, means that we could potentially build wind turbines on Titan in order to recover energy needed for electrolysis and even human settlements. Therefore, both fuel and oxygen are theoretically within reach on Titan. Since this was intriguing to me, I said, let's take it a step further. Let's see what an overall power generation system would look like. Here, wind energy provides the needed power in order to electrolyze the subsurface ocean in order to recover oxygen for internal combustion engines and even human settlements. Since hydrogen can also be produced during this process, we could store this hydrogen as rocket fuel, or we could convert it along with the atmosphere into ammonia for fertilizer or even hydrazine, another rocket fuel. Hence, Titan could become a spaceport to enable exploration for the rest of our solar system. Now, why use internal combustion engines? One, because they are cool and we like to burn stuff. Two, as illustrated, they can be used to help convert the atmosphere while also providing localized power and heat for human settlements. For example, NASA has researched the use of internal combustion engines on Mars in order to power aircraft and surface vehicles in order to traverse and survey the planet. Third, unlike nuclear power plants and solar panels, it is possible to build and run an internal combustion engine largely without the need of electronics. All you need to do is get the intake hot enough and compress the mixture to the point of auto-ignition. And it is presently feasible to print engines. Current research in our laboratory is investigating the construction of internal combustion engines using three-dimensional printers. As illustrated here on the left is a titanium crankcase, and on the right is an aluminum cylinder head. Both components were printed by one of my graduate students at the Army Research Laboratory. Therefore, we could print 
our power plants are tight. At this point, I'm getting super excited about the possibility of burning the atmosphere of Titan, so I tell my wife about my idea. Obviously, she looks at me like I'm crazy, which maybe I am, but it's keeping me out of her hair. So she says, go for it, and thus begins a grand thermodynamics adventure. Following the same methodology I employ in my sophomore level thermodynamics class, I begin solving the mass, momentum, energy, and entropy equations for the entire power generation system. These calculations begin by first solving for the reversible cell potential of electrolysis of the subsurface ocean under high pressures and low temperatures. In addition, I decide to simulate the internal combustion engine using homogeneous chemical kinetics in order to prove that combustion is kinetically possible. Furthermore, let's be honest here, since we're all thinking no one is going to believe me, I decide to incorporate calculated values of entropy generation through the entire power generation system in order to prove that each process is theoretically possible. It took me over two years to perform every calculation and justify every thought and concept in my manuscript. Over 120 references are researched and included. During this process, I read about Titan in journals like Icarus, which is a fantastic journal name, by the way. Reminds me of my favorite group of all time, Iron Maiden, and their song, Flight of Icarus. Granted, we're talking about flying further away from the sun to Titan, but anytime you can bring Iron Maiden into a technical talk, it is worth it. Anyway, I write this manuscript over and over and over, working to get every sentence just right. I know this is going to be a very interesting peer review process when I send the paper out for review. Then, the reviews come back. I get some of the best reviews I've ever received. Overall, a great read, and some of the worst. One reviewer said effectively, I know that we're supposed to encourage novel thought, but I just don't like it. <laughs> However, I'm able to address all the reviews, and the paper gets published. As a result, I believe this is the only published effort that proves combustion on another world is theoretically possible. Not only is it possible, it is do doable now using current technology. In other words, we could go to Titan, we could burn the atmosphere, and we could terraform the planet. Wow, what a ride from concept to validation. Thinking about this effort, I realize that it is only at this point in my life that this entire idea is possible. The derivation of every process stems from papers we have written, classes I've taught, conversations I had with students, and support from my wife. Looking back, the day I decided to start teaching thermodynamics started me down the path of this otherworldly idea. Here we see students from my first thermodynamics class wearing their thermodynamics entropy generation happens t-shirts. Or, in a more appropriate vernacular, stuff happens. My mom loved that. It was this class that galvanized my approach to every thermodynamics problem the same way that I employed in my Titan paper. Overall, academia is an amazing place where you improve every day. I continue to learn from students how to be a better teacher, researcher, and person. In addition, academia is where you learn patience, and the ability to prove your mettle. Instant satisfaction is fine and easy nowadays. However, the success gained after years of effort is a satisfaction that cannot be cheaply reproduced. The greater the struggle, the more gratifying the reward. So, where to now? Well, this Titan idea has generated significant discussion during our laboratory's bi-weekly meetings between my graduate students and myself. It would be fantastic to see this practical idea be part of a science fiction novel. Maybe we can even save Matt Damon again. Seriously, Matt, stay on Earth. In addition, the idea of creating ammonia and hydrazine using the Titan atmosphere is currently being researched in my graduate-level catalyst modeling class. Moreover, we've discussed getting bottle gases of mixtures that emulate the Titan atmosphere in order to combust in our internal combustion engine laboratory, including the engine we are currently printing. After one such lively discussion involving what it would take to recreate this combustion process on Earth, one of my graduate students turned to me and said, I hope you realize you are the destroyer of worlds. Excellent. Thank you all. <laughs>